The night was dark and moonless, a thick blanket of clouds veiling the stars. I found myself alone on a long, desolate highway, surrounded by an ocean of trees that seemed to reach out like gnarled hands, eager to snatch me from the safety of my car. My headlights cut through the darkness, illuminating the narrow road ahead as I gripped the steering wheel tightly, my heart pounding in my chest. I had taken this road countless times during the day, but driving it at night was an entirely different experience. The once familiar landmarks now seemed like sinister silhouettes shrouded in mystery. An eerie silence enveloped me, broken only by the distant hoots of owls and the whispering of the wind through the trees. As I drove deeper into the night, the sensation of being watched washed over me. It was an inexplicable feeling, as if unseen eyes were observing my every move from the shadows. I tried to shake off the unease, attributing it to fatigue and my overactive imagination. But then, a flicker of movement caught my eye in the rearview mirror. I glanced back, my heart skipping a beat, but there was nothing there, just the darkness and the empty road stretching into oblivion. I took a deep breath, reminding myself that there was nothing to fear. I was alone on the highway, and the eerie feeling was merely a product of my mind playing tricks on me. But as I continued driving, that unsettling sensation persisted, refusing to be dismissed. As the miles passed, I grew increasingly tense. The road seemed to go on forever, leading me deeper into the heart of the night. Suddenly, my headlights flickered, and then, to my horror, they went out completely, leaving me engulfed in darkness. Panic surged through me, and I desperately tried to restart the car. But despite my efforts, the engine remained lifeless. My heart pounded in my chest, and I could feel cold beads of sweat forming on my forehead. Feeling vulnerable and exposed, I reached for my phone to call for help. But as I unlocked the screen, I discovered that there was no signal, as if I had been cut off from the outside world. As I sat there, surrounded by the suffocating darkness, a sudden chill ran down my spine. I could sense a presence outside my car, a malevolent force lingering just beyond the veil of night. Fear paralyzed me, and I dared not look outside the window. And then, from the shadows, emerged a figure, a tall, slender silhouette that seemed to float in the air, its features obscured by darkness. My heart pounded louder in my ears as I felt an overwhelming sense of dread, a primal instinct telling me that this was not of our world. The figure approached the driver's side, and I could now make out its eyes two glowing orbs that seemed to pierce through my soul. Fear and curiosity battled within me as I tried to comprehend what I was witnessing. Who are you? I managed to whisper, my voice trembling. The figure didn't respond, but I could feel its malevolence. It emanated an aura of darkness and despair, and a surge of terror coursed through my veins. In a last-ditch effort to escape, I tried the car again, pumping the gas pedal with urgency. To my relief, the engine roared to life, and I slammed the car into reverse, tearing away from the sinister figure. My heart raced as I sped away, but the feeling of being watched persisted. Glancing in the rearview mirror, I saw the figure, now distant but still visible, watching me with those glowing, malevolent eyes. I drove for what felt like an eternity, my fear and adrenaline pushing me forward. The road seemed endless, and I couldn't shake the feeling that I was trapped in a nightmarish loop, destined to drive this desolate highway forever. The surroundings had changed the trees, now seemed to close in on the road, forming a claustrophobic tunnel. The air felt heavy, and an otherworldly fog crept across the ground, obscuring my vision. In my frantic state, I missed the signs that warned of the haunted history of this highway. Legends spoke of lost souls and malevolent spirits that lurked in the shadows, waiting to ensnare unsuspecting travelers. As I continued driving, the figure appeared again, this time right in front of me, blocking the road. I slammed on the brakes, the tires screeching as I came to a halt. The figure hovered there, staring at me with its chilling eyes, daring me to proceed. Driven by desperation, I turned the car around, hoping to find an alternate route. But no matter how far I drove, the highway seemed to lead me back to the same spot, as if the road itself was mocking my attempts to escape. In a state of panic, 
I noticed a side road branching off from the highway. Without hesitation, I veered onto it, praying that it would lead me away from this nightmare. As I drove down the unfamiliar path, the fog thickened and the air grew colder. Shadows danced in the periphery of my vision, and I couldn't shake the feeling that I was being followed. The malevolent presence was still with me, lurking in the darkness. The side road seemed to wind on forever, and my sense of direction began to blur. It was as if time itself had stopped, and I had entered a realm beyond reality. Suddenly, the car jolted to a halt, and I found myself surrounded by an impenetrable wall of trees. There was no way forward, and no way back. I was trapped at the mercy of the haunted highway. In the distance, I could hear the faint echo of a haunting melody carried by the wind. It was a mournful tune that seemed to seep into my very soul, evoking a profound sadness and despair. With trembling hands, I stepped out of the car, hoping to find some clue, some way to escape this nightmarish reality. But as I walked deeper into the forest, the fog thickened and the shadows seemed to move on their own, forming grotesque shapes that twisted and contorted. I felt a presence behind me, and I turned to see the figure once more. Its eyes bore into mine, and I could feel its malevolence, its hunger for souls. I stumbled backward, my heart racing, but there was nowhere to run. As the figure advanced, I realized that this was not a chance encounter. This was its domain, its twisted realm. I was nothing more than a pawn in its nightmarish game. With every step, the figure grew larger, more imposing. It seemed to consume the very essence of the forest, becoming one with the darkness itself. I closed my eyes, hoping that it would all be over, that I would wake up from this horrific dream. But when I opened my eyes, the figure was gone, and I found myself standing back on the desolate highway, the fog still thick around me. It was as if time had reversed, and I was trapped in an endless loop of terror. Time lost all meaning as I wandered the haunted highway, my mind clouded with fear and confusion. The malevolent figure seemed to appear and disappear at will, taunting me with its presence. The forest whispered with haunting voices, and the fog became a suffocating shroud that enveloped me. As I stumbled through the darkness, I felt a strange compulsion pulling me towards a distant light. The light flickered like a distant star, promising safety and salvation. Desperate for escape, I followed it, hoping it would lead me out of this nightmarish maze. The light led me to a clearing in the woods, where an old, abandoned cabin stood. It looked ancient, as if it had been there since time immemorial. Its windows were boarded up, and its door hung crookedly on rusted hinges. In my desperation, I pushed the door open, revealing a dusty interior filled with cobwebs and shadows. The air was heavy with a sense of foreboding, and I hesitated before stepping inside. To my surprise, the cabin seemed untouched by time, as if it existed in a realm beyond reality. It was as if the cabin itself was a portal to another dimension, a place where the laws of our world did not apply. As I explored further, I discovered cryptic symbols carved into the walls and a peculiar altar at the center of the room. It looked like a place of worship, but not of any religion I recognized. Intrigued and desperate for answers, I touched the altar and a surge of energy coursed through me. My mind was flooded with visions of the past, of ancient rituals performed in this very cabin, of dark entities summoned from the depths of the unknown. I realized that I had stumbled upon an ancient site of power, a place where the boundaries between our world and the supernatural were thin. The malevolent figure that had haunted me was not a random specter. It was a guardian of this realm, tasked with keeping intruders at bay. In a moment of clarity, I understood that the only way to escape this nightmarish loop was to confront the malevolent figure, to face my fear head on, and to show it that I was not its prey. With newfound determination, I left the cabin and ventured back into the fog-laden forest. I called out to the figure, challenging it to reveal itself and end this torment. The woods fell silent, and for a moment I wondered if the figure had abandoned me. But then I heard the faint rustle of leaves and the chilling sound of its whispers in the wind. It appeared before me, its glowing eyes fixed on mine, as if daring me to challenge its dominion. 
but I stood my ground, my fear giving way to a newfound strength. I am not your prey, I declared, my voice steady and unwavering. I will not be trapped in this nightmarish loop any longer. This is my reality, and I demand to be released. Ah! The figure seemed taken aback by my defiance, and its malevolence wavered. It was as if it had not encountered such resistance in eons, and it hesitated, unsure of how to respond. In that moment, I realized that the malevolent figure was a manifestation of my own fears and insecurities. It drew its power from the terror it instilled in its victims, and by facing it head on, I was robbing it of its strength. With newfound confidence, I took a step forward, and to my amazement, the figure began to fade. Its eyes dimmed, and its imposing form dissipated like smoke in the wind. The fog lifted, and the haunting voices of the forest fell silent. The malevolent figure was gone, and I was left standing alone in the clearing, bathed in the light of the moon. As I made my way back to the desolate highway, I felt a profound sense of relief. The night no longer seemed foreboding, and the darkness no longer held any power over me. I realized that the haunted highway was not a malevolent force in itself. Rather, it was a reflection of the fears and uncertainties that resided within me. Confronting the malevolent figure had taught me that darkness could be transformed into strength, that the night could be embraced rather than fear. As I drove away from the haunted highway, I felt a newfound sense of freedom and empowerment. The night no longer held the same terror, and the unknown no longer felt like an insurmountable obstacle. In the days that followed, I embraced the darkness, exploring its mysteries and delving into the unknown. I sought out forgotten legends and ancient rituals, learning to navigate the supernatural with respect and curiosity. My encounters with the malevolent figure had opened my eyes to a hidden world, one filled with wonders and terrors beyond imagination. I no longer feared the darkness, but rather I embraced it as a part of the rich tapestry of existence. I continued to travel the desolate highway at night, not as a victim of fear, but as a fearless explorer. The malevolent figure was gone, but its memory served as a constant reminder of the power that resided within me. In the years that followed, I became known as the Midnight Traveler, a wanderer who dared to venture into the darkness and unravel its secrets. People sought me out for guidance, and I became a guardian of the night, protecting those who ventured into the unknown. But despite my newfound confidence, I never forgot the haunting encounter that had changed my life forever. The malevolent figure had been a manifestation of my own fears, a reflection of the darkness that resided within me. I had learned that the night was not something to be conquered or feared, but rather it was a realm of possibilities, a canvas on which we could paint our own destiny. And so, as I drove along the desolate highway, the darkness no longer felt like an enemy, but rather it felt like an old friend. I embraced the night, its mysteries and its secrets, knowing that within its depths, I would find the true essence of myself. The haunted highway had transformed from a place of terror to a place of revelation, and in its depths, I had found the strength to embrace the night and all its wonders. As I continued my journey into the unknown, I knew that the night would always be my companion, guiding me on a path of self-discovery and enlightenment. And so the Midnight Traveler ventured forth, a fearless explorer of the darkness, forever chasing the mysteries of the night. As the years passed, I delved deeper into the mysteries of the night, exploring forgotten legends, unraveling ancient rituals, and seeking out the hidden truths that lurked in the shadow. Each encounter with the supernatural reinforced my belief that darkness held not only fear, but also a wealth of knowledge and wisdom. Word of the Midnight Traveler spread far and wide, and people from all walks of life sought my guidance. Some sought to dispel malevolent spirits that plagued their homes, while others sought answers to age-old riddles that had eluded scholars for centuries. In one such quest for answers, I received a cryptic message from a reclusive scholar named Professor Thorne. He claimed to possess knowledge about the malevolent figure that had once haunted me, and he sought my assistance in deciphering an ancient text that held the key to understanding its true nature. Intrigued, I accepted the invitation 
and traveled to the professor's remote estate. His home was nestled deep within a forest, and a haunting atmosphere hung in the air, as if the very trees whispered secrets of the past. The professor greeted me with a mixture of excitement and trepidation. He had spent a lifetime studying the occult, and had dedicated years to unlocking the secrets of the malevolent figure that had tormented me on that fateful night. Together, we pored over ancient texts and esoteric symbols, delving into a realm of knowledge that few dared to explore. The professor shared his theory that the malevolent figure was an entity born from the collective fears and anxieties of humanity, a primordial force that had existed for eons, feeding on the terror it instilled in its victim. According to the texts, this entity was known as the Eidolon, a name that sent shivers down my spine. The Eidolon had been encountered by travelers throughout history, luring them into its realm of darkness and despair. Many had never returned, forever trapped in its malevolent grasp. I couldn't help but wonder if my encounter with the Eidolon had been a mere coincidence, or if it had been drawn to me, sensing my vulnerability and fear. The professor's research suggested that the malevolent figure preyed on those whose souls were troubled, using their deepest fears as a means to trap them in its realm. We continued our study, deciphering ancient engravings and decoding hidden messages. The more we uncovered, the clearer it became that the Eidolon's realm was a twisted reflection of the human psyche, a realm where fears materialized and nightmares came to light. It was evident that confronting the Eidolon was not merely about defying a malevolent force, but about facing one's own inner demons. Only by acknowledging and overcoming our fears could we break free from its grasp. As we pieced together the fragments of the puzzle, the professor and I realized that there was a way to confront the Eidolon and banish it from our world once and for all. But it would require an act of extraordinary courage, a willingness to face the darkest recesses of our soul. Together, we prepared for the final confrontation, gathering ancient relics and performing sacred rituals to amplify our power. The night of the confrontation arrived, and the atmosphere was charged with energy, the air thick with anticipation. We ventured back to the desolate highway, the very place where I had first encountered the idol. This was the nexus of its power, the place where it drew strength from the fear of those who dared to traverse its haunted path. As we stood on the road, I felt a surge of trepidation, but I also felt a newfound sense of empowerment. The knowledge I had gained and the strength I had acquired over the years fueled my determination to face the Eidolon head on. With the professor's guidance, I began the ritual, channeling the ancient power that had been dormant within me. We chanted incantations, calling upon the forces of light to banish the darkness, to dispel the fears that held us captive. The night seemed to hold its breath, and then, as if in response to our call, the malevolent figure emerged from the darkness. It towered over us, its glowing eyes fixed on me with a mix of malice and surprise. But this time, I was not afraid. I had embraced the darkness, accepted its existence within me, and I stood strong in the face of the Eidolon's malevolence. You have no power over me, I declared, my voice resonating with certainty. You are a creation of fear, but I am more than my fears. I am the master of my own destiny. Yay! The professor joined in the chant, and together we unleashed a surge of energy that enveloped the Eidolon in a blinding light. The malevolent figure writhed and twisted, its form distorting as if it were being pulled apart. In that moment, I felt a connection to all the souls that had ever been ensnared by the Eidolon. Their pain, their terror, and their despair surged through me, but I refused to be overwhelmed. I embraced their suffering, acknowledging the human experience of fear, but I also embraced the strength and resilience that existed within us all. With a final burst of energy, the Eidolon let out a haunting wail, its form disintegrating into nothingness. The darkness that had once haunted me vanished, replaced by a sense of clarity and peace. In the aftermath of our confrontation with the Eidolon, the desolate highway became a place of tranquility. The malevolent force that had once lurked within its shadows had been banished, leaving the road a mere path through the wilderness. As the midnight traveler, 
I continued my explorations of the night, but now with a deeper understanding of its mysteries. I helped others confront their fears and anxieties, teaching them to embrace the darkness within themselves and transform it into strength. The professor and I became steadfast friends, bound by the profound experience we had shared. Together, we continued our study of the supernatural, seeking to understand the depths of human consciousness and the hidden realms that lay beyond. As I looked back on that fateful night, I realized that it had been a turning point in my life, a journey that had led me to embrace the darkness and all its wonders. The desolate highway had ceased to be a place of fear and had become a symbol of transformation, a reminder that confronting our deepest fears can lead to profound growth. And so the Midnight Traveler ventured forth, guided by the wisdom of the night and the mysteries it held. I no longer feared the darkness, for I had discovered that within its depths lay the potential for profound self-discovery and enlightenment. As I drove into the night, I knew that I would forever be a seeker of truth and a guardian of the darkness, a fearless explorer of the mysteries that lay beyond the veil of the unknown.